created something here that is iconic, you know? I mean, these are some of the most famous movie costumes in the history of film. So I think uh, one more round of applause, because really, it's very special. Thank you. Thank so you. to start off, I'm, you know, uh, we spoke briefly before this um, screening tonight. This was a different time in filmmaking, and I'm curious to know, how did you get this job? How did this job come to you? Did you know somebody who was making the film, or was it no, something you interviewed uh, for? No, I, I, work, I worked for Universal almost 20 years, and uh, I was just there doing film, and uh, the Wal uh, Walper and Mr. Walper and uh, Margulies asked, me to do the film, and they were established at Universal. Did they know you from prior work? I don't know. I don't know how they knew me. I, uh, <laughs> or maybe I just was uh, kind of a loose cannon there anyway, <laughs> you know, at the studio, and they kind of put me on different films. So just to open that up a little bit, most of us haven't worked in a system like that, where it's a studio system and you're around and you get assigned to different jobs. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Well, you don't apply for it. At least I didn't apply for it, other than when I first started in, the, in motion picture, I came from live television. And uh, I... Uh, I didn't think I was going to last because I, <laughs> having to do those fast changes uh, behind the scenes, and also one day I had uh, <clears throat> Shirley MacLaine, and she had to be changed on the beat of her music uh, from uh, on nineteen. Uh, I would say 1890 outfit to a 19 something and then into uh, a leotard. And it had to be on the beat of the music as, as the stage revolved. And I had, to, <laughs> I had to be in total black so I wouldn't flare into the camera. And uh, it, it was nerve wracking. I thought I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna last, you know. So you started in the live television. I beg your pardon. You started in live television, and live then television. you moved into yes. motion picture features. Yeah, and uh, it was a terrific experience, and I worked for some really wonderful designers, and uh, enjoyed everything I did except, you know, those hair raising events. So I. <laughs> So, so when you got I this moved job, on. <laughs> right? When you got this job, and you were hanging around Universal, and Wolfer said, "Hey, uh, who's that lady? Let's get her in here." I have to tell you how I got my job. At you, know, it was not actually Universal. It was Review Studios. Mm -hmm. It was the first venture of of the. Uh, um, Agents, agents went into doing motion picture or television, live and film television. Mm -hmm. And uh, I saw something on the screen one night on a Hitchcock show, one of those hour mm -hmm. Hitchcock show, and I thought it was so good. It, I, I just thought costumes were the best they'd seen in a long, and they were very ordinary. It was They were just everyday clothing, but it, I saw the name on the screen afterward, and I thought, I'm gonna call them up. That guy has gotta hear how much I enjoyed that show. And so I called Review the next day and asked for the people that do Hitchcock, and they turned me on to this guy that handled the costume department, and I said, I just love those costumes. I just thought they were so outstanding. And he said, who are you? <laughs> <laughs> I said, well, I, I, 
I just love costumes. I said, I'm actually in live television. And he said, well, give me your number. We don't, he said, I've got all men every day. We've had a series, you know, of just men alone. We don't, I have never had a woman work here, wow. which is true. And they had no women in their films. Mm -hmm. They were, well, I won't go back to them, but I, they were all male. And uh, a very next day he called me up and asked me if I knew what a Mary Widow was, and I said, oh, sure. He said, well, come in and, come in and get Faye Ray one. <laughs> and that's how I got into motion picture. That's amazing. That's great. <laughs> and so you know, just a phone call? Right. Yeah, it's take just a chance. Opportune as crazy things happen. Yeah. So when you got that job, Yes. That led to other jobs and led to other jobs, or yes. were you on a contract with a studio? No, you don't have a contract. Okay. At least I didn't, mm -hmm. and I, uh, they would kind of loan me. I, they, I went over to Disney and worked, and then I came back to re review, and I worked for um, uh, Republic. Mm -hmm. I was on that lot, so I became acquainted with the designer there, and uh, on and on it went. I mean, just one thing after the other, I was very fortunate. It sounds like you worked very hard, But though. I wasn't designing. You were supervising, yeah? No, Costuming? I was a set person. Uh -huh. So how did you ascend? How did that happen? Well, that happened because my, I was working for this gentleman that I had uh, complimented his costumes, and he uh, and we got him. Uh, the prop department one day sent a man, um, a ventriloquist dummy, which this little lovely little lady was supposed to be a princess, and Claude Rains was going to be the manipulator, and he falls in love with her. And uh, uh, you got to believe it <laughs> to see it. Anyway, um, they wanted the ga a gown for her that would work so that he, she could sit on his knee and he could manipulate. And I, my boss said, you want the job? Can you do it? And I said, oh, sure. And he didn't believe it. And I had been to art school. I had studied costume and construction and so forth. So I knew how to cut and sew a costume. And I made one for her and decorated it and gave her a little crown. And everyone approved and liked it, and it worked. And that kind of told him that I did know what I was doing, you know, that I I had experience as far as schooling had gone. And that's kind of the way I got into designing. Mm -hmm. So when certain stars came along that wanted, uh, you know, their own wardrobe, uh, I just kind of went on and on from job to job there. At the, at the, in the sort of the same t channel of filmmaking, you mean? In the same? space? Well, there were series and there were, uh, you know, various uh, productions that could use mm, a costume designer. Mm -hmm. And they weren't really used to that. I mean, uh, as I say, these agents that were running it, um, they didn't really know an awful lot about what went on on the you know. Oh. So little has changed. <laughs> <laughs> but we had to show them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this is cool. So you got to the place where you were designing. Yes. And then it sounds like, based on your reputation, which was very good, people called you in and you got work and you just went for it. It seemed to be, yeah, just a word from them. This that's person or that person or... That's lovely. I mean, 
that's a, that's a gift, really, to have work come to you like that. So you must have had a very, very strong reputation. Well, I I was just lucky. Yeah. Well, I you know, so when you got this job, Willie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, who did you talk to about the script and ideas and those kinds of things? Well, that was the. Um, they really kind of walked away from it, M Mr. Uh, the Markleys and uh, uh, Wolper, right? Yeah, and they called in uh, the writer, the the original uh, Dahl? or somebody else, screenwriter, the guy that wrote the book. Roll Dahl, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, he. I had the sketches done by then, and he looked them over and said he liked them, and that was it. So that you didn't have conversations before you did the sketches about what they kind of thought they might want, well, or a little bit, mm -hmm. a little bit, but not a whole lot. Uh, I kind of had the feeling that they were just kind of throwing it away, you know, that they weren't really into it, wow. you know, <laughs> like amazing. I was, I got into it, yeah. I loved it, and then um, when it was finished and I showed the uh, Margulies and uh, Walper uh, the sketches, and that was it. Uh, so how many sketches do you think you created? You know, it's the movie is interesting because it mostly takes place in one day, but there are so many different scenarios within that. How many sketches do you think you did? Let's get around to the Olympus. Yeah, right? <laughs> I mean, because they have a few looks. And it's, that's why I was, I was watching the movie again, and I'm like, wow, okay, there's one look, there's two look, there's, and you know, it's, it's it very. Was, it was a workout, because yeah. by then, Mel Stewart, the director, was giving me guidance on, uh, on that, uh -huh. and uh, he put me through the ringer. I didn't really know what he was talking about, because at times he would say, I want it to look like that candy, uh, you know, that little caramel thing that goes around. Um, he says, we used to have them in New Jersey, those little candy store. Have it. And I didn't, but I worked at it. And then when I saw it on the screen, um, what were those orange faces and green hair and white eyebrows? <laughs> what, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Well, I. What happened? You know. <laughs> My God. So, so let's talk that about that. That was the shock of of my entire career. I, I've never, I've never been. Wow, that much. <laughs> right. So the movie shot in Germany. Yes, it left. And the, uh, they asked for the sketches. And I, had, uh, I was waiting for fittings mm -hmm. and castings. And they just called one day and said, would you bring up the sketches? And that was the last I ever heard of this film. Wow. So, yeah. So let's let's unpack this a little bit. So, <laughs> so you did the sketches and you yes. designed the costumes, and yes. they said, mm, "Helen, can you come in for a minute and bring the sketches?" And they took your sketches and they went to Germany and they left you here. The the, the director Mel Stewart was the only one that when he saw the Oompa Loompas, uh, he started coaching me on the look. So that was his one focus. That was his thing. Uh -huh. And so apparently when I don't have any understanding of orange faces and right. green hair, does anybody? No. <laughs> now, when you sketched out the Oompa Loompas, what color was their skin when you did a sketch? Oh, my sketch was a little, I went back thinking about what I loved as a kid was the Campbell Soup kids. 
I don't know if anybody remembers that. Yeah, yeah. the big heads, big I heads. I love those little rosy faces and the little Dutch cuts. And that's what I had, a little blonde Dutch cut and a little rosy nose and cheeks, you know, like those Campbell Soup kids. I loved them. I I crazy about the look. So <laughs> when I saw the other, the his, Mr. Margley's, um, uh, or uh, Stuart, when I saw his version, I didn't understand what what caused it. So when, yeah. So when you saw the movie for the first time, it was really you seeing the costumes that you had designed for the first time. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, tell us about that experience. I mean, you tweak it a little bit. Yeah. But what is it you? I mean, when you saw the movie for the first time. Oh yes. What was your reaction? Well, were you I happy was about it, or were you confused, or? I I was confused. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of all, the sketch the sketches were they were true to the sketch. There were some things that I said, oh, yeah, you know, a little fur coat, oh, right. <laughs> that's different. But that's all, you know, I, I have no objection to uh, what I saw on the screen. I thought, you know, that when you're there, you can do all kinds of little tweaking. Right. Did and they call you at all or correspond with you during the making? Not at all. I wow. never even knew it was in Germany. I had no idea. That's really crazy. Isn't that bizarre? Yeah, and I and it kind of hurts because as a designer, this is your baby. You My baby, yes, and and I care about you know yeah. the details. Yeah. That beige bow tie on his <laughs> neck was so wrong. <laughs> yeah. Where do you think those? Somebody changed it. Where do you think the sketches are? Like the original. Your ideas, where do you think those sketches went? What was that? You, the sketches that you did for these characters? Yes. Do you think the studio still has them, or where do you think they might be, the sketches? The sketches that were left over there, as far as I know. Uh -huh. Or they came back and somebody has them. Because I, I have not seen, I don't know about you guys, I have not seen any sketches from this movie. I want to see them now. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I think that would be something really fantastic for us to investigate and find is are your sketches that would be interesting yeah, yeah. although i see that that uniform uh gene wilder uniform was uh sold at an auction so those things must have come back those right costumes must have returned here Right. They usually do that because of the uh, taxes and, and uh, the uh, import, export, and all that sort of thing. And if they maybe had reshoots, it would have benefited them to come back and here. Maybe perhaps. those costumes did return here. But the sketches would be cool because that is your work and your hand in it. So, all right, sleuths, <laughs> find them. It's really quite a big mystery, the yeah. That's how it was made and where it was made. Um, so, the costumes that you created for this movie are iconic. People dress up like these characters for Halloween. They do plays. How does that make I've you feel? I've seen some of them on television. Yeah. In, you know, some of those little contests and stuff. How does that make you feel, knowing that you contributed? I'm, I'm complimented. I, I think it's great. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful work. It is. It's and for anybody to... Um, copy you or come close, it's, it's, that is complimentary. So speaking of, when they did the reboot of this movie a number of years back with Johnny Depp, did you see that version of the, uh, I don't remember the, the exact title, Willy Wonka and the Charlie Chocolate, Charlie Chocolate, Chocolate, Chocolate Factory. Factory. Did you see the reboot version with Johnny Depp as Willy Wonka, the movie that came out a few years ago? I think I did, but it, it vanished. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I was curious. I bet. But it was not, not as much fun as this one. Right. I think it's interesting when you are the 
original designer of this fantastical concept, when they reboot it, it must be incredible to see it. Yes, it is. And, and you know, it's kids' stuff. And I think kids go with it. I mean, they, they, get, they get into it. And uh, I, I, they, they forgive the green hair and orange faces. They really do. Kids, kids are wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure they, 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 they may get a kick out of it. I don't know from a kid's point, a little kid's point of view, but they, they certainly love the movie. Yeah, it's great. Um, so specific questions about the costumes. When you did those illustrations, did they say to you, we're looking for primary colors or we want it to be very poppy, that kind of thing? The, the colors did, you know, pop, but uh, mm -hmm. that was not discussed. Actually, very little was discussed. Uh, Mel Stewart was the guy that you know, got into uh, the Oompa Loompa. I mean, those pom-poms on what? their <laughs> shoes was the most vital thing in, the, <laughs> in our conversation. <laughs> it was just absorbing. <laughs> That's amazing. And you know, the, uh, the question that everybody has asked me since they knew I was going to talk with you, uh -huh is how that violet Beauregard exploding blueberry costume happened. Yeah, that was, uh, that, that, I did that little two-piece idea because I thought that it would help them in, in the uh, effect. With the belt popping? Yeah, yeah, of blowing up. Actually, it didn't really figure in it at all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, it made sense, though. I mean, you know, the belt pops, and that's quite dramatic, and then it's another stage of that. And I had an idea that it was, the look was storybook. It should be more storybook. Mm -hmm. the, the characters should look like they came from a little kid's book, you know. Mm -hmm. That's my feeling, and I tried to stick with it. It carried through well, I think, you know, it has a classic look to it. For a film that was made in the early 70s, it doesn't, you know, hit yeah. you over the head with that early 70s look. So that was very good. Um, I have a million more questions. We could be here all night. <laughs> uh, the question I have to know is, how did you get to work with Hitchcock? How did I get to work with Hitchcock? With Hitchcock? How did that happen? How did that come together? I, uh, well, I worked on this on the TV series at times. However, Mr. Hitchcock was not in charge of that. I mean, he was not there. His representative, Joan, um, forget her name right now, but his assistant was the producer at the time and uh, a, a very understanding, a very lovely woman. And so did they ask you to do Psycho? How did that happen? Yeah, well, that is an interesting story because Mr. Hitchcock wanted to do a m movie, but he wanted to do a movie like we did television, and Paramount didn't want to do it. So he came over, he had offices and all over at uh, Universal, so he came over to Universal to do it. And uh, I got assigned, I mean, our boss assigned me to, the, to it. And... Uh, That's incredible. Like, your, bo your boss just said, mm, Helen, go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I went and had a little just a little interview with, uh, with Hitch myself, just to sit down and he kind of questioned me about things. However, he's such a thorough man. He had photographs of the offices. He went to Arizona, or he sent a representative to Arizona and photographed the offices of the real estate people and and the look of everything, not, well, the girls too. Yeah, their office outfits and so forth. 
and he, he it it was a snap it was <laughs> he told me exactly what he wanted mm -hmm. he wanted her in black underwear at one point and he wanted the white underwear in another point and it was very easy to do yeah, that's incredible very, very easy man to to work for in that respect you give him what he wants and mm -hmm. and that's easy enough because you got a photo right so he was just he was giving you photos and saying i want this he, he would give you photos and say i want this yeah just that's, this. that's it mm -hmm. not the underwear but you know <laughs> Wow. That, that, but but the the look. Did you have a small crew or a big crew for Psycho, in c terms of the costume department? Did you have a lot of people working with you in the costume a, department? No, for, no. It seems like a small movie. It was very small. Mm -hmm. The uh, the uh, the where the design part came in was the mother's dress, and that was done. Yeah, I had to make a dress for a man that was the stabber mm -hmm. and dress for mama the the uh skeleton mm -hmm. a dress for a mi miniature woman it, she wasn't i think she was a dwarf the mother's mother's son came from upstairs downstairs in one scene and he was carrying his mother but that had to be uh, a Small little woman. Person, yeah. So there were costume after costume, big ones, medium ones, small ones, and it all had to be the same outfit, right. <laughs> you know, the same old lady costume. Right. And then you also worked with Clint Eastwood as a director, correct? On Play Misty for Me, Clint? Play Misty for Me? Mm -hmm. With Clint Eastwood? Yeah. And how, how did you um, hook up working with him? How did you meet? How did that happen? Well, I was assigned to his movie. <laughs> <laughs> they just said, do That's this. Do this. <laughs> and it just meant, uh, you know, shopping and, or getting modern wardrobe together for the girl. Was he very particular as a director? Clint? <laughs> well, I'll tell you, he handled himself and his costumes kind of without your approval. I mean, it was just, you know, stand back, this is what I'm going to wear. And that's okay. I, I, I thought, gee, that's a load off my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'd handle the girls. <laughs> I really, I, I'm just still trying to get over the fact that, that they're like, oh, we have a Clint Eastwood movie. Uh, Helen, go. Like, I just, I can't like conceive of that. That was the way it was. I just went from movie to movie to movie, and uh, and I, and it was. That's great. I mean, your fun. reputation preceded you. Obviously, like you knew what you were doing, and they appreciated you. So of all the work that you have done as a costume designer or in the costume department, what do you think was your favorite? I know you're going to ask that. I have to. <laughs> um, gee, I had television shows I loved. Um, it just vanishes when I yeah, think about it. It's a long career. You know, it's hard. Yeah. Do you... Um, you know, I was talking with somebody earlier tonight about costume designers and how they behaved in that era. And there were a lot of costume designers at that time who were like, look at me, look at me. And, you know... Edith Head. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think she was out front a lot and, and loved the publicity, and she did well with it, you know. But for other designers, such as yourself, did you feel like you were toiling in somebody else's shadow? Did you ever feel like that? No. You just worked and kept getting it jobs with Hitchcock and Clint Eastwood, and you're like, It oh, was oh. a creative job. It yeah. was a wonderful opportunity for me to express myself. 
And that's what I had always wanted ever since I was five years old. Yeah, that's good. It's awesome. We're, we're delighted that you're here tonight telling us all these stories. A dream, really a delighted. dream come true, yeah. we're very sure. So moving toward um, contemporary costume design, have you seen any movies these days that really spark your fancy in terms of their costume design? Anything that gets you excited that you've seen recently? Yes, I went, I went to uh, fit them. Oh, good. And I saw the costumes, and I was just floored. I have never seen anything like that. The imagination is just outstanding. Just things I couldn't possibly hold my own in, a, in that company. But you paved the way for that work to happen. I, really I, did, I did it before, you know, sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> I got escaped that. So is it, is it the sci-fi stuff specifically that you look at and you think, whoa? Oh, I'm just so impressed. I just love it. I love it. I don't see the movies, but I, those, <laughs> costumes, those costumes knocked me sideways. <laughs> That's really good. Um, any, any thoughts that you would like to leave with new designers who are here tonight? Any advice or any guidance that might be helpful, do you think? I don't know other than just to love. If you love your work, you'll always be successful. If you enjoy working with people, even difficult people, yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, it is. And, and how uh, do you survive? As far as actresses and actors and their likes and wants and dislikes, yeah, you just sort of swing along with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you did a long list of films uh, and television shows. When Was there a point in your career where you, th where you thought to yourself, I think I'm done? When, 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 like, how everybody yeah. retires at some point, but what drove you there? Well, at the end of Centennial, I was done. Centennial, a big TV series in the se late it was 70s. A, it took a year to sh do that, and it was hysterical casting and uh, at, at, at five o'clock in the evening and they shoot the next morning and you know it, that wore me down mm -hmm. that wore me down uh, I had wonderful Helene to do the sketches and uh, I mean I had every opportunity to enjoy it and I did as I went but the fittings and the and the I'll tell you, the, I had a little criticism from the set by a, an assistant director. And he told me that uh, they should all have black hats, that that was never, well, with thousands of actors, you don't, you know, you just can't do it. Yeah. And that doesn't sound like it was a little, job. little twitch, yeah, a little twitching <laughs> like that. Just saying. <laughs> kind of gets to you after a while. Yeah, I hear you. Um, any more thoughts about um, your favorite memories uh, from the work that you've done? The me well, I mean, all, I, 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 the majority and the and the work was a joy. It was fun. I, the workroom work was delightful, and most of it was just a good, a good way to spend your day. <laughs> On that note, we are honored to have you, and thank you so much for coming tonight. I mean, this is incredible. Thank you for sharing your stories with us. Yeah, thank I you. hope I didn't bore anybody. <laughs> no. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Questions from the audience, my bad. Yeah. Uh, Okay, yes. When you said you didn't like the beige uh, bow tie that you... The, oh, that... What, did, what color was it supposed to be for you? Well, it was supposed to be a lovely, sort of a... Maybe they thought it was bilious, but <laughs> I thought a little 
a kind of a yellow green, and it was a. Actually, it was t a changeable. Oh, like a reversible. T a taffeta, a changeable taffeta from lavender to a green. Oh. I thought it was interesting, but they didn't like it, or maybe the cameraman didn't like it, or someone. Sounds like a good maybe idea. Maybe Mel Stewart. <laughs> In the black shirt, you had a question. Yeah. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, could you talk a little more about your ideas for the design of that? Concept? I'm pretty hard of a hearing. Oh. Can you talk more about your ideas for the design of the Willy Wonka costume? And, there, and also for that costume or anything else, given the nature of the movie, could you do any research? And was there research to be done for Willy Wonka? Oh, no, yeah, my dream, as I said, my dream had been like the like Campbell Soup kids. And they had, what I really want, what I saw was uh, wearing a little um, white toque, like a uh, chef, because they were guys who were making chocolate thing. So I, that's what uh, uh, came to my mind. And uh, it was not Mr. Stewart's idea, I guess. No, it, <laughs> it came off with green hair and white eyebrows. <laughs> uh, yes. Um, you had said I heard you say you were getting ready for fitting, so obviously you must have had some costumes made here that went to Germany? No. No. Just, no. No just, costumes were ever made here. Just my sketches were turned over to the producer, and that was the end of it. I never saw the sketches come back. I didn't see any wow. costumes come back. We've got to find those sketches. Yeah. YouTube will be on it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any other questions? What was it like working with Marlon Brando? What was it like working with Marlon Brando? Oh. On um, what? <laughs> <laughs> it was okay. He put me through the ringer. Uh, we had, uh, it was a peon outfit, and everybody knows that Mexican peons wear white trousers and white old muslin shirts and pants and sandals and uh, that was my sketch and he said no 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 I want I want it to be blue and I said it won't work that's not a peon he says I don't care I want a blue outfit mm -hmm. and I said blue and he said yeah royal blue <laughs> And I thought, well, what am I going to do? I went, I, I, <clears throat> I went back to my boss, and I said, he wants a royal blue peon outfit. And he said, he, there's no such thing. I said, what am I going to do? He says, let's make it for him. So we blew the first budget by making <laughs> a blue outfit, and the minute he put it on, he says, I hate it. I said, I knew you would. <laughs> and I said, you want to be a, a Mexican peasant? Wear the white mm -hmm. and the sandals. And that was, and I made a little ser serape, kind of, a little rough thing, and I put a few um, threads a black and red or something. Anyway, I, 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 made, I aged it and really made it look like it was something for him. And the minute I, he saw it, he put it on, and then he pulled all the black and all the red out. And he was just a trial. <laughs> <laughs> I gave up. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, he was uh, he was a naughty boy. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it. <laughs> the, the day he smacked me on my behind, I left. Oh, yeah. And I never went back to yeah. the set. Yeah. 
that's horrible. I'm sorry that that not happened nice. to you. What was the, was there any consequence for him for engaging in that kind of behavior? Or was he just free to do whatever oh, he he's, wanted? Oh, he's pretty much his own man. You yeah. know, he could do what he wanted. No, everybody stepped back, you know? Mm -hmm. That's disheartening and what a... I left the set and never went back. Yeah, don't blame you. Don't blame you at all. Um, we had another question over here somewhere. I saw a hand raised. Oh, your question got answered? Any Anybody else? Yeah. Did you read the original Willy Wonka book uh, as part of your research to come up with the costumes? Did you read the original Willy Wonka book by Roald Dahl to come up with the costumes? No, I, I don't believe I did. I read the script. Well, that's funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I didn't read the book. Interesting. Maybe I should have. <laughs> <laughs> they mentioned orange faces in the book. So. <laughs> it might have been just in kidding. there. <laughs> you had a question? Uh, just a statement. Uh, your birthday is tomorrow, isn't it? Right. So this was something that we looked at online, and we found on IMDb that it says that your birthday is tomorrow. True or false? My birthday? Right. Is August... <laughs> it's in August, yeah. Well, I, it's fake news, I guess. <laughs> you know, yeah. don't believe everything you see on the internet. August fourth. August fourth. Okay. Yeah. We'll be ready to party. <laughs> Send me a card. Okay, I love it. <laughs> so I'll know it's my birthday. <laughs> uh, well, this again, this has been just delightful to talk with you. I'm just really thrilled, and I think we're all honored to have you here with us tonight. Thank you so, so much. Nice. I, Thank I'm you. I'm honored to have such an audience.